All right, so my first bowling tip uh, with the red ball here. I like to bowl an in-swinger to the right hander, particularly when it's new and looking like this, what a beautiful thing a new ball is. So I'm a left-handed bowler. Um, so I feel like for, for my in-swing, I use my index finger the most. So I want to keep that seam nice and upright when it comes out of the hand. So my last point of contact is my index finger. So I can change around that angle of the seam. So slightly angled in almost to, to fine leg if I'm a left-handed bowler and bowling to a right-handed batter. And I want to come nice and down the back of the ball so the seam stands up and swings in and hopefully hits that front pad or the stumps more than likely. So that's, that's what I like to do with a brand new ball. The second one which I've been working at for a little bit of time now, which someone like Josh Hazelwood and Pat Cummins do really, really well, is what we call a bit of a wobble scene. So same idea, I still want to come down the back of the ball, but I'm going to change my position of my fingers and the seam. So I want to angle it the other way, and I want to come down the back of the ball, so the ball wobbles out this way, and if it hits part of the seam and nips one way or the other, then the batsman is going to be in trouble. So I'm trying to put that ball in a position where it doesn't matter which way it goes, you can bring in the outside edge, come back and hit him on the pad, but same idea, I want to come down the back of the ball. I'm just going to change the position of the seam and it's going to wobble down and hopefully catch an outside edge and those slips take a catch. So that's two tips with the red ball. So we've got the in-swinging one when it's nice and new and swinging or the wobble seam, which hopefully goes the other way and hopefully we catch a few palms out with that one. Now my third tip, I'm going to have the white ball here a ball that I like to use and I've used a lot over the years, we're going to go for the Yorker. So you can use it when it's new, old, uh, in the middle, particularly at the death overs when the batters are trying to hit you for sixes and boundaries. If I'm, if I'm trying to hit them on the toe or the Yorker, hopefully hit them on the stumps and get them out, that's going to be best for everyone. My idea is, is not so worried about the seam. If it's reversing, then I want to try and reverse it in. But what I'm thinking about when I'm bowling the Yorker is I'm looking at those stumps. So my theory is that in T20 cricket, one day cricket, batsmen move around the crease all the time. So if I'm focused on the stumps, they don't move. So my, I change my point of aim up and down the stumps depending on where my first one goes. So if I'm bowling my first Yorker of the game, I'll aim halfway up the stumps because I feel like that's where I will hit the base of the stumps. So if that first one comes out too full, I'll change my aim slightly down the stumps and if I miss too short, I'll aim slightly up the stumps for the next one. So that's how I approach my Yorker is I take my point of aim on the stumps and don't worry so much what the batsmen are doing because they'll move around the crease a bit, but those stumps stay there the whole time. So I'll aim for that point on the stumps, still bowl my normal action to try and rip down the back and hit them on the toe or on the crease. And hopefully it's a dot ball or it's a wicket or you're closing out a game for your team and Yorker is still a good ball.